previous episodes we have looked at data, we have looked at buffering processes, we've looked at the charge balance and the concept of ANC and made a model that links the ANC to the pH and the pH to the ANC. We also looked at the grunt titration, which is a method to determine the ANC directly. In this episode, I will expand the mathematical water chemistry model to include a very important process, and that is the dissolution of limestone or calcium carbonate that is in contact with water in many situations, in groundwater, in lakes and streams and soils. And in this catchment here at Dalby Söderskog, it's clear that there is limestone in the soil. And by doing this, we will also check if it's reasonable to assume that the water here in the stream is in equilibrium with calcium carbonate. So let's start by looking at the dissolution of limestone, calcium carbonate. At low pH, we can view the dissolution reaction as a reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrogen ions to produce free calcium ions and carbonic acid. And at intermediate pH, we can see the dissolution as a reaction between calcium carbonate and free CO2 and water to produce calcium ions and bicarbonate. And at high pH values, we can view it as a very simple relationship between solid calcium carbonate, free calcium, and carbonate ions. And this way of viewing the calcium carbonate dissolution is consistent with the previous discussion about which inorganic carbon compounds that dominate at different pH values. The equilibrium equation is written very simply as a solubility product, that is, the product of the concentration of calcium ions and carbonate ions. And the dissolution equilibrium constant is about 10 to minus 8.4. Here I want to make a disclaimer. At high concentrations of ions, we should actually use the activities rather than the concentration. But for this analysis, let's stick to the simplification that the activity equals the concentration. Now we need to look at how the A and C can be defined. As shown in previous episodes, the charge balance states that the sum of the anions to the strong acids and the anions to the weak acids must balance the cations to the strong bases and the cations to the weak bases. And this results in two different definitions of the acid neutralizing capacity, the A and C. One is the difference between the anions to the weak acids minus the cations to the weak bases. And the other one is the cations to the strong bases minus the anions to the strong acids. However, if calcium carbonate is present, the calcium ion is in fact cation to a weak base. And that means that we need to change in the upper definition to include calcium. And correspondingly, we need to remove calcium from the second definition so that the calcium ion is no longer considered as a cation to a strong base, but rather the cation to a weak base. And here we have the same definition of the A and C. As you may recall, to calculate the relation between the A and C and the pH, we need to substitute all these concentrations for expressions where the H plus I is the only variable. In this case, the equations we need to use are the solubility product of calcium carbonate, but that can be written as calcium 2 plus equals the ratio between the solubility constant and the carbonate. And before, we have developed an expression for the carbonate concentration as a series of constants times the carbon dioxide pressure divided by H plus squared. And we can combine the last two expressions to get an expression for the calcium 2 plus concentration as a product of the solubility constant times H plus squared divided by a series of constants and the carbon dioxide pressure. To make the calculation, the equation we have to solve is A and C equals and a series of expressions, where the first one represents the OH concentration, the second one the bicarbonate concentration, the third one the carbonate concentration, the fourth one R minus, then we have H plus, aluminum 3 plus, and finally the calcium concentration. In terms of numerical calculations, what we actually have to find 
is the root to the equation 0 equal minus a and c plus the various terms that come from the charge balance. And whoops, it appears as I forgot a 2 in front of the carbonate concentrations in both equations. So let's look at the solution to this equation. Here I have made a series of calculations of pH as a function of A and C in the water. And the calculations have been made for a certain DOC value, ambient carbon dioxide pressure, and at a certain temperature. And the red curve represents the pH as a function of A and C without any calcium carbonate present. However, if calcium carbonate is present, we see that the pH will be higher, especially at low A and C value. And that is because calcium carbonate acts as a solid base that dissolves and thereby consumes H plus ions. Now we can relate these calculations to the data that we have looked upon earlier. Here we have the data from the two streams, Dolby Söderskog and at the beach forest. And now we will focus on the data set from Dolby Söderskog with the metals, the anions, the carbon species, and the pH. Earlier we have made calculations of the A and C as the contributions from the cations to the strong bases minus the anions to the strong acids. And what we did was to take the concentration in milligrams per liter divided by the molar mass, multiplied by the charge, and then I multiplied by 1000 to convert units to micromoles per liter. We did this for all ions. And calculated the A and C as the difference between these sums. And the resulting A and C was 2,358 micromoles per liter. However, if the calcium ion acts not as a cation to strong base, but as a cation to weak base, we should simply take that away from the calculation. And we end up with an A and C of minus 260.6 micromoles per liter. So let's relate these A and C values to the model that we just developed. Here we're back to a relation between the pH and the A and C in the water. And here we have the curve where calcium is considered as a cation to a strong base, thus without any solid calcium carbonate in contact with the water. And the A and C was 2,358 micromole per liter. And hence, at this A and C value, the model predicts a pH of about 8.4, which is higher than the measured 8.15. This could be compared with model calculation, where we include calcium carbonate. And in this case, the A and C is minus 260 micromole per liter, and the pH predicted is about 8.15, which is very close to the measured value. So what is the conclusion? Well, I would argue that it's reasonable to assume that the water running here in the stream in Dalby Söderskog is in fact in equilibrium with solid calcium carbonate.